Good morning. Thank you for joining us on Leicester Ealing's YouTube site. My name is Pastor Dave Holmes. If you want to follow us, why not uh, click the subscribe button and the notification. You can also follow us on Facebook on Leicester Ealing um, Church Facebook site and Leicester Ealing Church website. We'd love you to come and join us and spend some time with us each day as we just share the Word of God in a simple way with you. Well, we've been looking over the past few days at the parables of Jesus Christ and what they teach us and what we can learn from them today. You know, the Word of God is living and true and active and, and has an effect upon us. And so we're going to look at another one and we're going to look at, uh, I guess, three in one in some ways today. We're going to look at uh, a parable from the Gospel of Luke, but it's also told in the book of Mark and in Matthew as well. So let's just read what it says in Luke chapter 5 verses 36 to 39. And he was also telling them a parable. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skills will, skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one after drinking old wine wishes for new for he says the old is good enough. And uh, before we talk about this parable, we need to go back a little bit and just see what was happening. You see, Jesus was teaching something very new and very different. And the people were beginning to follow him. The people were beginning to get behind him. The people were beginning to like what he was saying because never had they heard anybody speak like this before. You see, he shared the, the truth of the word of God in such a way that actually people found freedom and release from the bondage that they were living in. Not just under the tyranny of the Romans, but actually under the oppression of the Pharisees and the scribes and the law. And, and what we see was, as Jesus uh, was beginning to share actually they'd already tried to stone him they wanted to stone him and kill him but he managed to escape the other thing that he did that they didn't like was he spent time with sinners and tax collectors you see it, that was a no-no for the pharisees you were to separate yourself from them but but no jesus spent time with them and, and in fact right at the beginning of this little portion in Luke chapter 5, five, we see Jesus being questioned by the Pharisees for spending time with them. And he says, I've not come to save the righteous, but I've come to save the lost, the sinners. And that's why Jesus spent time with them, because he had come to seek and to, to seek those that were lost. And then we, we travel down a little bit. And the other thing that they didn't like is that his disciples, hmm, they were made up of just ordinary people. You see, to become a Pharisee, or you, you had to study, you had to be from the right background. Um, and Jesus' disciples were, were tax collectors, Matthew, were fishermen, Peter, James and John you know what I mean they, they just weren't the right people and so the Pharisees were not very happy because actually they felt threatened I guess because under under what Jesus was sharing they couldn't see much room for themselves you see they were like the law police <laughs> they kept the people pegged down in fact, in, in Mark 7, verses 7 to 9, it says this. Jesus was saying this to the Pharisees. 
In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandments of God and hold to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandments of God in order to establish your traditions. And in Luke 11, verse 46, he said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load the people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. In other words, you won't reach out to help anybody. You see, they had, they had taken the law and they'd taken it to pieces and they'd done this and they'd added hundreds and hundreds of new things that the people had to do. They had burdened the people with so much stuff that, that they didn't know whether they could breathe or not. <laughs> and here came Jesus like a breath of fresh air. Suddenly... Wow, this was a message of freedom. This was a message of hope. This was a message of joy. You see, in these three short little parables, we see Jesus talking about the old and the new. And he says you can't mix them, is the first one. You can't mix the old with the new. You can't take an old garment and put a piece of the new on and expect it just to last because when it's washed, the, the, the new piece will shrink and just tear off. And so you have to do away with the old garment and have the new one. Who, who, who's going to cut up a new garment to patch up an old one? No, you throw the old one away and you wear the new one, don't you? And then, of course, the, the second one was similar. It was like, well, you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. You see, they would, they would make wineskins of the skins of animals, primarily goats. And what they would do, they would, they would put the wine in there and it would ferment in there. And, and as the wine fermented, it got bigger. And if the wineskin wasn't flexible, it would just burst. And so you can't put new wine in an old wineskin. You can put old wine in a, a wine that's already fermented, you can put into a wineskin, but you can't put new wine into an old wineskin. And Jesus again was saying, look, you can't, you can't mix the two, you can't. Here is a new covenant here is the new covenant the covenant of grace of mercy of love of joy of freedom jesus had come not to do away with the law but to fulfill the law so that we might enter into a new place through christ behold the old is gone the new has come on the cross he shouted it is finished because he'd accomplished what God had sent him to do. The new covenant had come. A covenant of freedom, of joy. And the third little parable talks about people that won't even try the new. They, they're so locked up in the old ways of doing things that actually, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, actually they can't see new possibilities they can't see the new things that Jesus was speaking and talking about you see when it comes to Jesus it comes to freedom you see the the Pharisees were fearful when they listen to Jesus talk when they see the people's response when they see actually that the people were casting off the restraints that they were trying to put on them. Why? Because Jesus was bringing a message of hope, of freedom. They were fearful. They couldn't see a future in this new system for them. They could see themselves being made redundant and out of a job, I guess. You see, fear captivates a person. And that's what they 
where and that's what they were trying to do. But freedom brings life, hope, liberty and joy. And that's what the people could see in Jesus. In Romans 8 verse 1 it says this, doesn't it? It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. And do not be encumbered once more by a yoke of slavery. Take notice, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you. You see, what was happening is that people had come into the freedom in Christ Jesus. But then what was happening was that the Jews were coming around and saying, actually, you, you know, you've got to be circumcised. You know, you've got to have your foreskin removed. Uh, otherwise, you're not acceptable to God. But God had circumcised the heart of man, hadn't he? God had done something on the inside. And that's what God does. You see, the law acts on the outside where grace acts on the inside. Grace brings freedom. And in Galatians 5, 6 to 8, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision has any value. All that matters is faith, expressed through love. You were running well. Who has obstructed you from obeying the truth? Such persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. You see, <laughs> people try and drag us back. Who You were running well. Who or what has pulled you back? You know, it's freedom that God wants you to live in. For he did not give us a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear. It says in Romans 8, 15, But you receive the spirit of sonship by which we cry, Abba, Father. You see, we are not in religion, we're in relationship. And we've come into relationship with God in a new and living way through Jesus Christ. It's not about the do's and don'ts and shoulds and shouldn'ts. But it's about love. About a relationship. You know why? Why do I do the things I do for my wife? Not because I should, but because I love her. I love her to bits. And I don't want to do anything that would hurt her or hurt our relationship. It's not about um, what I should and shouldn't do. But it's about the relationship that I have with her. I don't want to hurt her. And the same applies with God. It's a relationship. It's not about doing a set of rules. But it's about being in love with a God who loves us. And, and living in that relationship and not. Wanting to hurt God who loves us so much. So when it comes to these three short parables, where are you? Are you the old garment that's trying to put on a bit of new? Or have you done away with the old and become new? Are you an old wineskin that's trying to take on new wine? Then let God make you a new wine skin to take on the new wine or do you just refuse to look at the new <laughs> because the old the old has always been okay well let me ask you God has brought us into a relationship of freedom it was for freedom that Christ set us free let's set each other free in Christ Jesus shall we Bless you. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.